Yeah, like center. So, okay. Uh, let me share my screen. So, first of all, welcome on board for the topic of microservices, which is moreover software architecture fundamentals and microservices. And I explicitly took software architecture fundamentals as small uh, font and yeah, we'll see why. And please tell me if I'm going too fast, too slow, whatever, if there is some problem. So for the agenda, uh, there are a few, a few points which I explicitly want to mention, like architectural classification, factors to be considered when you are talking about architecture and taking decisions on that, microservices, when and when not to use microservices and the complications that comes along with microservices. So let's get started. First of all, architecture classification. Generally, it's done on two broad uh, categories. One is monolithic and the other one is distributed. And then when we divide it more, it looks like this. In monolithic, there are few, and same goes with the distributed. I just listed a few of them. For example, in monolithic, you can see layered, modular, microkernel. But on the other side, in the distributed part, microservice is one of them, then service-based, service-oriented, event-driven, and space-based. So why I'm talking about architectural classification so that at least you should know where microservice lies, okay? Now the question is why microservice is important? So I hope this is funny, but important to know. This is what if there is no proper architecture uh, foundation is there, then for example, this person, the guy who is standing on the floor, he want to build his house. He gave uh, the instructions that he want a door, the walls, floor, and a place where he can sit with his wife and can chat, spend some good time. But when he came, this is what he saw, like imagining him and his wife with sofas, but not on the floor, but on the wall. So this usually happens when there is bad architecture or no architecture. So from this, at least you can imagine that how architecture is important. I really want to convey one important message that in IT industry, especially for this session, please go with the literal English meaning so that you can relate it with your personal life. So for example, architecture software or IT architecture is same as a normal architecture. Designing is same like what interior designing you can call is, right? So just relate with the literal meaning so that you can actually know how important it is and you will never ever forget. So there are a few factors which, first of all, it's a bit quite confusing to have a proper definition. But like how, how, you, how I can say that the architecture I designed is the best one, but not the other person's uh, idea is good. So for that, there are a few factors which actually helps you to decide which architecture you should go with, because you have seen that there are broad categories, monolithic and the distributed one. Even then, there are a lot many options. So keeping, my, keeping in mind about these factors, you can think that, okay, what is my priority? What is the project need at that moment? Based on that, take decisions. Because at least I have seen and even I have experienced that many people, in the market because microservices is so booming word, everyone is talking about microservices, microservices. So just don't go with this buzzing word. Try to understand the importance, try to understand your requirement, your need. 
and then take decision because it's not always good to have microservices or it's not always bad to have microservices in some places microservices plays amazing role so first understand your requirement your need and then go and to understand your requirement these are the factors which can really help you a lot in a good direction so the next point again coming back to the slide which you already saw earlier when we when i was telling about the different different parts of my monolithic and the distributed system here the first of all the comparison we usually do in our life our daily life is totally wrong because we do it based on monolithic and microservices we we usually ask like who oh, uh, what are you using are you doing some monolithic project or your company is working using the microservices and blah 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 but first of all that is a wrong comparison it's not a comparison between a proper level i mean monolithic is a broad category if you want to compare with it do distributed system not microservices microservices is just one type of it right but anyways we will go with this uh, uh difference but yeah of course this is wrong that's why i showed it in different color that it's, we do this comparison it's not that good just keep in mind that what we are uh, make what comparison we are making second now we talked a bit about the architectural classification at this moment we also know where microservices lies like architecture then the classification monolithic and the distributed and microservices one type of distributed architectural part right after a long talk still confused what is microservices so here we go microservices is a autonomous independent deployable service that collaborate together to form an application again this is really important to know that this is so i also write it at the bottom that as this structure sprung up over years so there is no precise definition but there are certain characteristics available based on which we can define this is not a actual definition okay so when we are talking about micro you will also feel this in next few slides like why we are not saying that this is the definition so first of all if i split the word microservices micro means small and services we all know what is services so combining these together which means small services this is a literal meaning okay small services which are autonomous autonomous is like independent deployable and so deployable you can you can take consider it as a small piece of a code which you can build from scratch and you can maintain it right so in the picture you can see that the center part which is the dark green so all these are like the pieces of puzzle which are if they are kept in a proper place they all will make this image complete so in our case it's not the image it's the application and here these are the puzzle pieces which actually will be our real services so your different different services together bind integrate and make a complete application but remember these small piece of services should be independent and deployable one more important thing that how microservices came so this is not something new which suddenly arose that okay let's do microservices it it was a step by step process which came from soa right and then next part okay microservices small services fine cool enough but 
how small it will be. I mean, how I should judge that now my service is a microservice, right? Let's say at the beginning, if I, if I have an idea of making an application, which will be like, let's, let's just take an example of food delivery app. That's my favorite example, actually. So in food delivery app, we know this is the application I want to build. But then I want to do it using microservices. Cool, good enough. How are we going to do it? Then the question comes, just split it based on whatever we have seen till now or based on our knowledge. Let's split it. Splitting, done. A lot many factors, again, the point which I mentioned here, these are all the factors which is really important for you to decide whether to go with microservice or not, right? So here, I don't know when I should call my services microservice, maybe at the beginning, if I'm a startup, I want to build this kind of application and I just have four people, four developers, including me. Then building 10 microservices doesn't make sense because it's not at all possible to, me to work on it and then maintain them, right? Because at the end, the end goal is to make this food delivery app. So again, no concrete answer to this because it depends on you how much small you can break your service in a manner that you can handle it, taking under consideration that it will be independent and deployable. So a service will be called as microservice, as small as which you can deploy, which is autonomous, isolated and can be handled by a team, right? By few people. I'm explicitly using the word team again. Just speak my words, what I'm saying. It's important to know. And this is why we are talking about teams. So Amazon, according to Amazon's notion, they are saying that two pizza teams is the largest size of a microservice team. Like if, if a team who is calling themselves as microservice can maximize, I mean, this is a notion. Again, there is no hard code rule that if you are having more than 12 people, then you are not a microservice. No, it's, but it is from the experience that Amazon is saying that, okay, two pizza team is enough, which means one dozen people are enough for one service one microservice okay and then a small can be a small microservice team can have five people right so again the important factor is how how you will decide your microservice is small it's based on the feature the functionality and isolation deployment of that service without any problem and the one which you can handle. You means your team. Reason behind that is one team can handle multiple microservices, but the vice versa is not possible. It's, it's not the rule. So the rule is if I'm having a team of six people, let's say six people, then me and my team can handle maybe just one microservice or maybe three microservices. At some time, it could be six or 10 microservices. But the opposite, which means one microservice cannot be handled by more than one team. It's not possible that there is a microservice ABC and two teams are having the ownership of it. No. <laughs> The main funda of microservice is that when we are saying independent, deployable and isolated unit, it's because so that one complete team of, let's say less than one dozen people,
can take the ownership from start to end. And when I'm saying start to end, it means everything, in, including everything. It should be properly tested. It should be based on one explicit functionality and so on. Next, benefit of microservice. There is just one sm small piece of this puzzle. Reason again, because this represents a microservice. Microservice is a part of the complete application, right? So this is our microservice. So what are the benefits? Super easy. So before coming to the benefits, so from a broader picture, it's, it's looking amazing that microservice is super good. It's a buzzword in today's IT industry, everyone. Everyone want to work on it. Every company want to have it. And doesn't matter whether you know it deeply or not, but everyone is so interested in it. it it's also easy because it's divide your application into small parts and then work on it. That's a microservice, big picture, but that's not the complete truth. So let's first go with the benefits. First benefit, small service which means it can be owned by a team, easy to understand and can be rewritten. Second point, technology choice. Adopt new technology, use the right tool, standardize whatever needed, right? So I will take these two first point with an example. Let me just explain. Same food delivery app, me and my team want to work on it. And uh, we are taking, I mean, because we are talking in terms of microservice. So let's say this food delivery app, I'm just making it into big, small parts. I mean, yeah, some small parts, but which are not actually too small. So just based on the domains. One service I can think of as payment customer. So customer have to register themselves. So there will be a customer service. Customer have to provide the payment method because food doesn't come with no price. So there will be some payment service. Okay, so customer registered payment services, there what else? We, we are doing all this for food. So there should be someone who is preparing this food for us. It may be some restaurant or just name it as kitchen service. Then, okay, food is ready. There should be some delivery uh, service. Who will deliver it? Fourth, fourth part, delivery service. And then you can mix it up with the delivery, like uh, the tracking part, or you can put it as a separate one. So let's con consider these three uh, four parts. One is your customer service, your payment service, your kitchen service, and the fourth one is the delivery service. Four services, complete application, boom, done. And me and my team, we are working on um, payment team. It was just the beginning. And uh, there is a teammate, a new teammate came, joined our team, but somehow, okay, so, it's not a new team. We were existing team with a shitty code and everything. A new guy came and then he is like, okay, I want to understand because I joined your team. Can you please tell me? First of all, if it's a microservice, it's easy for him to understand because the code is only related with the payment, not the complete food delivery app, right? Where he don't have to understand from start to end. He just want to, he have to focus only the payment related stuff, right? So, and we will be the owner of team. Like if anything related with payment happens, it's us. So for example, there is a, like, let's say one of you, some of you are in some other team handling this customer service and there is some problem regarding payment, then you know whom to contact. It's not just random searching for the person that, okay, who, to whom I should talk about this, I have this problem or that problem, no. In this case, 
you will be having a complete team who is responsible for this feature, this part, and then you can talk to them. So firstly, you know who is the person. Second, if a new somebody new come in your team, it's easy for that person to understand what the shit you did. So, so yeah, not the shit, but yeah, what code you have done. And um, coming to the technology choice, it's the beauty of my, I, I would say that this is the best part of microservice. That again, food service. Let's see, me and my team, we just know one technology, which is Java. Nothing much. We don't know Go. We don't know. Um, yeah, we don't know anything. Just Java. But there are a few people who know Python, who know Go, who know Kotlin. Yeah. So it will not be a good combination that putting me with such a person who is who just know Python, know Java, and me who know just Java, know Python. So not a good combination. So what we can do? As, as I said, the payment service, I'm in payment service. Me, I will take a few people who are pro in Java so that we can make this payment service the best, right? Without taking under consideration that how and in which technology the other service is gonna build. So payment, payment service, we are using Java. Customer service, maybe let's say there are a few people who are very good in Go, Go language. They can build in Go language. There is no problem. And some other team having Python people, they will do in Python, right? Using Python. And so, so at the end, you will see that all these services are built in different, different technology because we are not the... Uh, yeah, we are not actually disturbing each other's work. <laughs> so yeah, uh, and at the end, when it integrates, doesn't matter which technology we used, it will be a complete application. So you have total free freedom to choose your technology, your tool, doesn't matter what the other team is doing. So best part of freedom. Do whatever you think you are best at and show, show your best code, right? And the individual deployment. I will uh, explain you with the example of monolithic with this because that will be easy. On one side, food delivery app, but that, that uh, company or yeah, that company they did using monolithic. Monolithic as an inset mono means one. So monolithic approach in which complete application is built on one single platform. There is no distribution of services in different, different languages, nothing. One language, so they consider yours, consider this complete application as one complete service, right? So if one person make any change, all others or everything is impacted because if one person make the code change and, or if he or she breaks it, it will be the complete application which was affected. But in microservices, as being a part of payment service, if I make a small change or maybe if something is broken at my end, it will, it, it will not affect the complete application I can continuously check. I can fix it quickly because I know where the problem lies. So also from this point, I would say that because I know the problem is with the payment service, I can fix it instead of rather than going and just randomly checking which service, which part it's creating the problem, right? So lower risk, minimum downtime because you know who is causing problem and what problem easy to fix and frequent updates because frequent updates, because for example, I'm in payment service. I really don't care that what the customer service person is doing. I really don't care what this kitchen service is doing because at the very beginning, we are very much clear about our roles and responsibilities, what we want to achieve 
and at the very beginning also we will just discuss what i am going to do and what you can expect from me that's it right so as in this case as the payment service is completely isolated from other i can focus on my part second let's say some random day someone says that okay till now we were just accepting credit cards and uh, debit cards we are doing good let's add some other services also like klarna or like the third party klarna or paypal paytm anything at that time again it becomes super easy because i am not dependent on any other service that they will complete their task and then i'm going to add these new third parties no i can pick it any time i can start work on it so just try to understand with these benefits how important they are and this is the reason that um uh, microservices really gain a lot of good words and popularity few more important two parts scalability we can scale the service any time okay what that mean taking the same scenario same example uh, that i know that uh, mostly people don't order food in the breakfast time people do in lunch and dinner but not in the morning time for the breakfast let's say i know from for the lunch time from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock because that's the actual lunch time when people are hungry and they want to order food they do their lunch right so in the whole day i'm not expecting that much of traffic coming like incoming request which which can affect my system like badly but from this 1 to 3 o'clock which is a lunch time a lot many people order food and there is a high chance that my my system can go down or may crash and same example customer service payment service food kitchen service and the delivery service in all of those if this is the scenario that from 1 to 3 you are getting a peak request what do you think which service going to affect the most probably it's the kitchen service because customer will log in i mean do this login process just once not every time the person is entering or want to go for food right so customer service of course not payment service no because the payment method the person already added so not that much of traffic but the kitchen service out of all these four services kitchen service will be the most important service which will be affected during this lunch time of 1 to 3 o'clock right so in this scenario i can easily scale up my this particular service only okay and i will just pay for this service and that too just for this particular time period but if it's the mon- if like if it's the case of monolithic i would have done for the complete service because there it's one complete service which is making the application so i can't differentiate between that which part i have to scale because that's a single part so a lot of cost will be going in case of monolithic but in case of microservice as i know the timing with service needs to be scaled up when i will do the scalability making sure that i am not paying for unwanted things i will just pay for those things which is needed meaning cost effective so here you can see in the scalability part there are two points mentioned one is scale service independently which i mentioned scaling the kitchen service and the cost effectiveness because you just paying for what you want kitchen service that too just for 2 hours boom next one agility easily reuse adapt rapidly i think it's easy to understand that 
in when we are talking about agile it's more about more over about how frequent you can change and in microservice coming to the back to the point when i said that you can divide it as small as you you can handle it as an independent service right so at let's say in this delivery service at some point i found that here yeah, this delivery uh, part delivery service of this application is too much it's too big now we have sufficient people who are expert in this area can handle it let's divide it right when i have all these things i will divide this delivery service into small one and then maybe the tracking service can be a new service coming out of this delivery service and it's not just the food delivery app for example the payment payment service can be used by any i mean you can sell it as a platform as a service to any other third party because the feature the main purpose of this payment service is just the payment and for it i mean it's not just a food delivery app who needs payment it's all the apps everyone needs money so which means every service going to need this payment service and because they want to get paid for the service they're going to provide right now whatever i mentioned you with the points like in a normal language with the example the same points are mentioned by aws but more over in the technical terms agility flex flexible scaling easy deployment technical freedom reusable code resilience these are all the points which we discussed in the previous slides okay with example and i hope i'm um, i'm not too fast so feel free to have your questions ready <laughs> so after a lot of discussion as a person i'm still not clear how to decide to use microservices i mean this must be a question coming from your mind also that like usha you talked a lot about a lot of things but still i'm not clear when to use microservice i'm still having that doubt so for clarifying your doubt this is the answer there were total 16 yeah 16 factors which are important to decide which architecture you should use these are the ones i mean with the stars on the left side are the ones which if you want these then you must go with microservice architecture right example i'm just going to read and then so that you will um, know first agility if you really want to that this product should be it's quickly available rapidly reusable all these changes go which means agility you want agility go with microservice you want deployability go with that you want domain part for example in my case in our example of the food delivery we divide it like based on the domain perfect perfect fit for microservice architecture elasticity evolvability scalability fault tolerance and testability because example of testability because already you divided your feature as a separate service you are testing it thoroughly but if it's just one application maybe the tester going to miss a, a tester or even the developer going to miss a lot of parts right but in microservice it's done deeply so when to use you must support the mentioned point on the left side if you want all the points which are on left side go with microservices organize team in domain based cross functional manner this is important i would say it's a it's a good practice that whenever you are talking about microservices have a cross functional team fast delivery and frequent deployments if you want this one go with microservice but when not to use microservice at all it's a big no when 
when there is about abstraction, when it's about cost, simplicity, performance, workflow. If these are your main points to consider, then please don't use microservice. That's not a good thing. Example, if I'm a startup, so just giving an example, taking why not to use with the cost part. If I'm a startup, I want to build this full delivery app. For sure, I'm not having too much of money. I need investors. Okay, I got investors. I'm not having people, right? I'm not using the word resources. I hate that. I'm, I, I'm not having sufficient people who can code and just not the developers because when we are talking about the company, company, there are a lot many other peoples also who are important. So I'm not having that much of cost money. I managed with the investors. I got investors. I have few people who can work for me or with me. But if I go with microservices, there will be a lot of things. I need a lot of people. And to pay them, I'll need a lot of money. But I don't have money. So better to stick with monolithic. Use it, make it work, and then think later on when you have sufficient amount. OK? Then, now, the, now it comes monolithic. Oh my God, you are talking a lot about microservices, but what about me? I'm not dead at all. I'm really good one. So this is what my monolithic says nowadays, seeing the current situation. <laughs> so in software engineering, a monolithic application describes a single tiered software application. In short, everything in one place, in one platform, okay? This is what monolithic means. And then, so till now you have seen coming from architecture, the classification, and then the microservices, what are the good parts, bad parts, everything, I hope so, got cleared a bit more from what you had earlier. But, and everything looks really pretty good. Yeah, we want this thing. We want all those stuff. It's amazing. Please remember, there are complications. First thing, it's difficult to deploy. It's not that easy. Second, difficult to scale. In the earlier part, I mentioned scalability, it's good, right? But here, I mean, if you go deeper, there are mainly two kinds of scaling, scaling, horizontal and vertical. Horizontal scaling, not possible here. Verticals, expensive, so you have to think how to how you can manage or what exactly you want to do. And then. Oh, which oh, is it a type yeah. or it be complicated? Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's monolith, it's, no? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. exactly. I think, oh yeah, sorry, sorry guys. This it's was great. about the previous one. Thank you so much. I was like, yeah, what's that? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, twice as people <laughs> start, start up with monolithic and then end up to microservices, uh, the one which I already explained you with the money part. And uh, almost all the successful, I mean, this is like trial and tested thing. Almost most of the successful microservice stories has started with monolithic, right? How are we going to do it? it you can get a clear picture from the next uh, slide. And also uh, the second point, like when you are building something from the scratch, better not to get into trouble. So this is the picture I took from one of the article from Martin Fowler, where he mentioned that on the top left, the green one, that's, that's a startup, okay? So, Two mindset, one is saying that, okay, let's directly go to microservice architecture, which is on the top. The next one, which says a monolithic, monolithic always uh, allows you to explore both the complexity of a system and component boundaries. So here you can see, if we go to the, the monolithic approach, the black box is having five parts inside it, which means consider this black as 
black uh, portion as your um, application and this colorful pieces as your features which may be later on you can call them as microservices but yeah at this moment it's a monolithic so everything in one go <clears throat> when you think that your application is working perfectly fine as you expected <clears throat> sorry then slowly step by step take those pieces separate like in the second part you can see that this orange part is removed out of that big black box and same story goes on continue and then on the corner the right corner you will you can see that all these small components are now separate services this should be the actual way because if you go with the another approach of microservices architecture directly first of all you will think that yeah that's really a good go you you can see a dragon green and there is a b but later on it will eat you right it's so risky when you are not having sufficient things and you are just going with the microservice as a buzzword what the people says so put take your time think about it and also the requirements what you want why you want and when you want okay next one i really like the approach what is mentioned by chris uh, richardson in it, there is also a book by him uh, named as microservices pattern so what he said in this pattern he said each and everything have pattern so why not microservices pattern he decomposed because till now i mean okay you got the idea what is microservices that when the complex uh, complication starts it's hard to relate that how this part is related with the other one and the other one related to the or another one and so on so what he did he said okay let's take it as a microservice pattern and decompose it he decompose it on three main layers one is application pattern another one infrastructure pattern and the one which is in between them is the application infrastructure pattern okay to give you a bit idea about it application pattern is something which is directly related with the teams like the teams which are taking the ownership of the feature infrastructure pattern is related with consider your platform team or your devops i will not say team but your devops and there is something in between which is application infrastructure so the question should be okay who is this i you already told who is taking care of application pattern who is taking care of infrastructure pattern but what about this middle one so nowadays i guess most of you are having or gone through that okay you are part of team but you also should know a bit of devops and this is why we need and i mean the middle layer so middle layer is related with the devops part but it is as it is impacting directly to your application it is said that it's you the team who have to take the ownership to do it right so question what is microservice architecture pattern language because this is the term what uh chris richardson mentioned and then why you should use it first of all pattern is always good because it gives you a clear idea that if something is happening in this particular way the, and that time we call it as a pattern so a good way to describe the various architecture and design options and improve decision making is to use a pattern language according to wikipedia it's an organized and coherent set of patterns right so taking a bad example but something which you will never forget if there is kind, there there is um, some murder happening with let's say there is a how much time okay i have few minutes there is a person who is murdering people 
with the same way, like uh, choking up them and then stabbing them with the knife, right? This happened in one part of, let's say, U South US, not US. Then at some place, and then in Spain also, the police is still searching for this person, like what is happening, what, why, and how this crime happened. But because of today's global and the interconnected world, they are con the police of these different different places are connected, and they are seeing that okay, the place or uh, the crime happened in one place is very much like very very much similar to the. Play, uh, crime happened to the other one and so on. Let's say there are 10 crimes happen in the similar way. Then what we say that this is the same pattern, which means this is a serial killing, right? So based on these patterns, you, you thought, I mean, you came to the conclusion that this is the same person who is doing it or a same group of people who is doing it. So it's a serial killing. So how you came to this conclusion of serial killing? Because of these patterns, right? Patterns are nothing but the, but the reoccurrence of similar kind of things. So bad example, I know, but yeah, you will never forget. <laughs> okay. And this is what uh, the microservice pattern is all about, described by Chris Richardson. So complete, complete image is the microservice pattern. And then it is divided into three different parts, application pattern, application infrastructure, and then the infrastructure. And this is amazing. I mean, I'm overwhelmed by this one because it clearly explains you what is where you come in picture and where the other person come in picture. What is your responsibility, how to decide it, Example, if I take this part of application pattern, which means the responsibility which will be managed by the team. So I got this, um, like the, uh, the new application of food delivery app, how I can divide it. First of all, you can decompose this application based on your business capabilities. Business capabilities means how many how many different people having different expertise you have. Other option could be decompose based by subdomains, which we just did, like the payment, customer, and all those things, right? Self-contained service, this is much more related with the Saga pattern. Service per team, again. So last two, last two are not the direct parts, I would say. But the about two and the arrows are with connected with dots, which means these are the alternative of each other. Either you can decompose by business capacity, uh, capabilities, and the other one is decomposed by subdomain, right? And then service per team, not one service cannot be handled by many teams. Very beginning slide at the very, yeah, it was at the very beginning. So there, and then you also have to decide about the database. Are you gonna do the, use the shared database or database per service? What kind of query you gonna use? API compositions like with the API endpoints or CQRs? So again, I know I'm repeating, but this is please, please, please highly recommend it to go with this structure so that you can correlate how things are related with each other and what are the things you need to care, uh, take care when you are thinking about a team, a service. Okay. Then references, I, these are the most, like the must read kind of things. First one, building microservices by Sam Newman, because this was the guy who actually brought that concept, saying that this is not something new, it is coming from SOA, and then he actually gave this microservices part. Then Chris Richardson, uh, 
which who gave this microservice pattern, which I just showed you in the picture and the, how he decomposed it, which is really important to understand because even I have seen people are really good in microservices, but when they have to think completely as microservices, it's as a microservice, it's hard for them to correlate. Okay, so please, please, please go with this pattern. It will help you to understand. And the third one is the articles by Martin Fowler at this location. So yeah, that's all. Thank you for having me and getting me. <laughs> so again, back. Uh, Thank yeah. you, Vishra. Uh, I'll just uh, stop recording now. Uh, thank you one more, once more for like the very detailed explanation of microservices. I think was suitable for all levels. And then 